Hey guys, it's Luca from Learning MTG, and today I want to do a video talking about dynamics. So, dynamics, it's a, it's a weird, this is going to be a weird one. So, this is kind of like how I view the world, right? I view it in terms of dynamics. It's basically how I guide my decision making. Um, basically, decision making under uncertainty, because I think all the interesting decisions we make are under uncertainty. Either, you know, there's some randomness to the situation, or there's some kind of uncertainty under in terms of like what is the underlying model it's like what is it that makes things go the way they go like prices in the stock market like what is it that makes prices change if maybe if we knew more of the factors we'd have less uncertainty so so let me talk about this dynamics so i think probably the easiest way to start to talk about this is to go all the way back to um eighth grade uh earth science right so for example, you know, why is it that the summers are hot and the winters are cold? Well, it's because the earth is tilted. And so when you're like on a certain <laughs> part around the sun, this is our sun. If you're like, and I, you know, <laughs> forgive me if I don't get this correct because it's been so long. Um, you basically, you get like longer days during certain parts of the year. And during other parts of the year, you're like this, and you get shorter days, and so you get more or less sunlight during an average day during different parts of the year, and so, you know, it gets colder or hotter. And that's, to me, a dynamic, right? We've got this tilt in the earth, and it creates this kind of mathematical system, you know, you could probably put a formula to this, and because of this, you know, we can understand why certain parts of the year are going to be hot, certain parts of the year are going to be cold. So we're going to follow like this kind of maybe like a sine wave trajectory in terms of average temperatures over the course of a year. So there's this dynamic, right? Um, another, another thing uh, that we learned in earth science was, you know, why are temperatures more moderate around water bodies and why are temperatures, you know, why do they swing more wildly uh, around the land and that's because water retains the heat energy and loses the heat energy more slowly right so maybe this is like what the water looks like and meanwhile a nearby land body the temperature might look like this right land so that's another dynamic you know we could have a dynamic where a land acts a certain way different than water in terms of temperature because of how it absorbs and emits that heat energy or another thing we could think about is you know i remember we learned about like wind wind happens when you have big changes in pressure so wind is much more likely to happen around water so there's all these different dynamics that can explain for in this case you know temperatures or weather um so that's kind of the way that i view the world um so let's think about for example you know maybe like a market cycle Right now, I'm looking a lot into Bitcoin, and people are talking about, you know, like bull runs and bear runs and all these sorts of things. And I just think of it in terms of dynamics. What is it that makes a bull run? What is it that makes a bear run? Is it because of the tilt in the earth? No, it's not, right? Um, this is like uh, human psychology. It's about maybe people getting greedy at certain points, maybe overconfident. Maybe, maybe it has nothing to do with these things. This is kind of what people say. And maybe this is people being like overly scared when you're at the bottom, right? But ultimately it's based on dynamics. And I think um, the people who are able to make the best decisions are the people who understand the most dynamics, right? So um, right now I see a lot of people talking about cycle, like market cycles, right? They're talking about maybe like a four year crypto cycle. Um, to me, you know, that's like, that's like step one. Step two would be like, you know, okay, if everyone else is looking at the world in terms of these four-year market cycles, um, then, okay, I'm going to bet on everyone else thinking this, but actually this is going on, right? Maybe it's the fact that, uh, you know, like, for example, one of the things I think about is, you know, Bitcoin, it shouldn't be acting the same way it has acted in the past because it's potentially in a, in a new territory, right? Um, because it's kind of like a, it's got a kind of like a network effect. Um, it basically becomes more powerful the more people use it. 
So maybe we shouldn't be looking at past dynamics now that it's getting more and more accepted. Or alternatively, maybe if everyone's expecting, you know, the same cycles over and over and over, actually something completely new is going to happen. And that's what happens a lot, right? I mean, even if you look at um, like market cycles in the stock market, it's never, ever predictable. There's always a deeper level of, of things, right? Um, there's always like another dynamic to think about. You know, for example, people talk about, you know, there's like market cycles in the stock market, but then there's also debt cycles, or maybe there's cycles of different nations that rise and fall in strength and in power. Um, maybe there's rises and fall, r rises and falls of new technology, right? Um, so I guess what I'm trying to get at is whenever I make these sorts of decisions, uh, and lately, you know, most of my decisions are investing decisions. I really try to look at as many dynamics as I can. And specifically, I think, I think what are the ingredients to a good investment? You know, like if you want to get high returns, you either need to risk a lot, <laughs> right? Um, and that's not that's not great. That's not advisable. Or you have to see something that others don't, right? That I mean, I don't think there's any other way. <laughs> there, those are the only two options. Maybe maybe a third one is like be in a small niche market that you know about. But even within that niche market, you have to know something or see something that others don't. So this is a big one. How do you see things that other people don't? And I think it really comes down to understanding, you know, more dynamics than other people. People will maybe see dynamics one, two, three, you'll see dynamics one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, yeah, I just want to make a video. This is kind of how I see the world. Um, you know, I'd say each dynamic is maybe like a, like a mathematical model or a mathematical formula or something of the like. Um, and just like trying to get as many of these as you can. And if you have a lot of them and you can kind of piece them together. One of the interesting things that happens when you're playing Magic, Magic is a game of incomplete information, right? Um, and you're trying to piece together basically what's in your opponent's hand. That's kind of like the key that's like the holy grail, right? If you know exactly what's in your opponent's hand, you can play out um, everything perfectly, uh, fairly easily. Maybe even like a next step is if you could understand what your opponent is thinking, you know, what do they think is in your hand? Or maybe, you know, what is their stra strategy in this game? You know, like, but ultimately you're trying to figure out what's in their hand. And it's really interesting that, you know, the more you, there's so many different ways to figure out what's in their hand. It could be, you know, how do they play their last turn? How do they play three turns ago? How are they sitting in their seat? Are they slouched? Are they excited? Do they look depressed? Do they look happy? What are they saying to you? Uh, how do they, you know, how are they tapping their lands? You know, and I find it interesting because in those situations, I've realized that you know, the more pieces of information you get, the more and more accurate you can get. You know, maybe with one piece of information, you've got like a 50% accuracy of knowing what's in their hand. With two, maybe it's like 70. Maybe with like five pieces of information, it's getting close to like 95. You know, like I remember a game I recently played, my opponent took forever <laughs> thinking about countering my spell when they're tapped out and have an island in play. So it's like, okay, I'm like pretty sure they have a daze. I can't really come up with many other reasons why they would have tanked that long. So I think it's similar with dynamics. Um, as you collect more and more dynamics, you can make better and better decisions and be a step ahead of everyone else because ultimately I think um, in, most, in most cases, um, the way that you're gonna you make really good investments is by seeing things that other people don't see. So I hope you guys uh, like this video and I hope to see you guys in the next video.